Welcome back to News Geelong as we continue with the action-packed world of Geelong sport. And from out in the field, our own flying hawk, Nathan Carey. Good evening, Nathan. Thank you very much, Rawler. I'm down here at the Geelong Falcons, and hopefully Sophie says this weather's here to stick around because, as you can see, it's just absolutely fantastic down here. Now, before we catch up with the Falcons football manager, Michael Turner, News Geelong caught up with David McVilly, Newtown and Chewell's best player in their 55-point win over Lara on the weekend. Skilled Stadium, here we come. 55-point winners, Newtown and Chewell over Lara. Best on the ground, Dave McVilly. A great effort, David. Yeah, no, it's great to get a win. Uh, good for a few of the younger blokes that come in the last couple of weeks as well. So, pretty excited about the next week and what's to come after that. Hopefully, leading uh, 77 to 28 at uh, half time, you look to really have the run in the legs. But uh, Lara, not to be forgot, come back in that third quarter. No, they were good in the second half. Um, I thought we'd just let them back in the game a bit. Probably, uh, it's probably been something we've uh, happened the last couple of weeks. Got to probably work on uh, coming out hard after half time and make sure we keep things moving forward. And then in, in the in the final quarter, you kick six three to or six one to for one goal three. Uh, you got your structures running and uh, you're running players through the centre on what seemed to be a hard surface, working very well. Yeah, well, the main thing is for us just get the ball in the hands of the right blokes and actually use the footing, get it down forward to Betsy and Davey Nine, a few of those blokes to get the score on the board. So just about consistency and moving the ball the way we want to get want it to move. Your back six played very well and uh, some good marking, good defensing, uh, and coming away from defensing to attack really well. Yeah, no, they've been fantastic all year. Uh, David Jalbart and T Timmy McKinnon and a few of those boys, but it's been solid and good rebound, which is what we need, and uh, yeah, looking good going forward. And the key forward is Jay Bett. Uh, again, those sticky fingers seem to fit well, and he really kicks nice and straight. Yeah, no, mate, when he's on, he's unbelievable, so it's hard to get the ball out of his hands, and he's a big asset to us. So. The experience of players like yourself and others uh, in the Newtown and Chilwell side, looking forward to Skilled Stadium. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I think we've got a good mix at the moment. We've got a lot of young blokes coming through, as I said. A few guys that have worked up out of the junior ranks and quite a few of us guys that have been here for a long time now. I think I'm nearly nine or ten years at the club, so it's good to have that mix and um, excited to have the young blokes around the place. Tom Friend uh, doing a great job in the ruck. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Uh, I guess I don't think he's played a great deal of footy up until this year. He's obviously been uh, over in the US playing basketball and he's been sensational. Him and Sandy uh, Robinson in the ruck, he was first uh, UC each week and uh, been a big asset to us. A, bit, a lot of hardness in there too. He's developed all year. And the running players through in the midfield are really opening up that forward line for your key forwards uh, to kick the winning goals. Yeah, well, Timmy Callan, uh, he's been a huge inclusion since he came mid-year, so it's um, great to get him on board. And uh, young Matty Higgins has been really good the last couple of weeks, and Aaron Baxter's been fantastic probably the last six to eight weeks. He's given us a lot of spark off the wing and really driven us forward hard. Thanks very much, David. Now, as all you loyal viewers would know, we've been catching up with the Falcons throughout their season, and if they lose on the weekend, this will be our last interview with them, but fingers crossed that doesn't happen if they can beat the Western Jets on the weekend. And I caught up with Michael Turner earlier to find out exactly his thoughts on the situation. Obviously, a 130-point loss isn't the result you wanted. What was the overall view from the footy club about the weekend's result? Yeah, no, it was a really disappointing result. Uh, two weeks ago, we were sitting fourth on the ladder in a, in a really good position, you know, to go towards the finals. And uh, we had a bad loss against the Western Jets and a worse one last week. So we're a bit perplexed at the moment. So all you can do is talk the players through it and have your reviews, uh, which we've changed a lot of things this week. And really, uh, it's back on the players. They've just got to make sure that they perform a lot better individually as a team this week and uh, get the result we want. Is there any positives you can take out of the match? Just a positive, well not from last week, it was pretty ordinary. We had some players that obviously you know, played very hard and tried as hard as they could, but you need the whole 18 players on the ground contributing, so that part of it was disappointing. But we just go back to our form during the year, the fact that we've got 17 players invited to the national and state uh, draft combines, which means the team's got a lot of talent. Um, and those players have got to draw on that. They've played well before and they've just got to play well again, as I said, individually as a team, and, uh, and it's their responsibility. We're here to help them, but uh, we can only do so much, you know, the staff and, the, uh, and certainly the coaches. Thanks very much for your time, Michael, and hopefully I'm back down here next Friday night. Now, before we go, we're going to catch up with Geelong Cats coach Chris Scott for all the latest before their big clash with Collingwood tonight in the final round before finals kick off next week. Now, Chris, does tonight feel like a blockbuster or a finals rehearsal for you? Oh, a little bit of both. It's, it's going to be a good game. We're playing really good opposition. Um, it's going to be fantastic match practice for us. Um, I think from the comments I've heard out of the Collingwood camp, it's going to be exactly the same for them. So, you know, we, we deal in reality. It's not the end of the world. Whatever happens this game, um, the most important thing is the, the four weeks post this game. But it is going to be important for our preparation and we want to play as well as we possibly can. Do you hold anything back tonight or is it just like normal? No, not really. 
I heard Mick say that if he doesn't know how we play yet, he's never going to know. And I think it's the same for us. Um, you know, we may do things differently if we get an opportunity to play them again, but a lot of that will probably be on the basis of what happens on the weekend. So, no, nah, we're, we're certainly not going to try to outsmart ourselves. Are you surprised by the perception from outside the club that after just your third loss you've become vulnerable? Oh, not really, because we were vulnerable when we were four and zip, and I think some people are still saying we were vulnerable when we were 12 and zip. Um, we can understand um, the concerns people have had. Um, we were convinced that they were never going to go away, irrespective of how well we played. And you know, if you go by the objective data, the last three or four weeks haven't been fantastic. But I guarantee you no one at the end of the season will look back at rounds 18 through 22 and say that was a critical part of the season for anyone. What counts is what comes next. Now, before we let you go, Chris, will Tom Lonigan get the big job on Travis Cloak tonight? Yeah, there's a very good chance that'll happen. Um, yeah. Travis is probably the premier key forward in the competition, so I don't think there are too many defenders that can confidently say, well, I'll beat him every time. Um, but we think we're pretty well equipped with our key defenders, even if Harry does miss. Thanks very much, Chris. Good luck to you and your boys tonight. We'll catch up with you again next week before the big final series kicks off. That's it for me this week. I'll be back again on Wednesday night. But until then, as always, it's back to you, Rollo. Thank you, Nathan. Full points. Enjoy your weekend of continued Bellarine Football League finals. Now to the Geelong and Surf Coast weather for the next six days of spring. Will we see spring continue in the air? Tomorrow, to start the weekend off nicely, Saturday will be mostly sunny with a top of 21. For Sunday, it will continue to be cloudy, with patchy rain developing from midday, easing to isolated showers at night and a top of 19. To start off another week of spring, Monday will see areas of morning fog, then a mostly sunny day with a top of 21. Tuesday is expected to be partly cloudy, with showers developing by late morning, then easing in the evening, and a top of 17. Wednesday will be partly cloudy with isolated showers, and a top of 15. Thursday will see cloudy conditions with isolated showers, and a top of 17. Today saw patches of frost and fog early in the morning, followed by sunny conditions with a top temperature of 19. That's the weather outlook for tonight. Let's hope that spring is really in the air and we can begin to feel a lot warmer. And viewers, scintillating Sophie Miller will be back with us next Wednesday evening. Thank you for being with us on News Geelong this Friday evening. To Ron and Dorothy Blackney, happy wedding anniversary. It really has happily lasted a long, long time. Remember, take your time and smell the flowers. From all the team at News Geelong, have a pleasant evening, an enjoyable weekend and a very good night.